I went to Japan to see how Arai makes helmets and what I saw in the factory shocked me. You're about to see things that no one has ever been able to show you because this is the first time in history that Arai has opened its doors to show the factory to the public. I had the honor, also thanks to Bear Race in Europe, which is the Arai Italian distributor for Italy, who has been working with Arai for 40 years, to be the one out of 12 people invited from all over the world. Now, I've been working in motorsports for 11 years now, since 2013, and I've always wondered why, whenever I ask riders, mechanics, industry people, which is the safest helmet brand, almost everyone answers Arai. And my question always was, why so many fans of Arai? What is so special about it? After going to Japan to visit them, I understood why. And that's the reason why I made this video. Signore e signori, questa è Arai. Arai is a 100% Japanese company. The head office is in Omiya, which is 45 minutes from Tokyo, while the other factory departments are in the area around Tokyo. On the first day, we were welcomed in the Omiya headquarters, where we had the honor to meet Mr. Arai in person, who told us his story. Yeah, that man is Michio Arai, and yes, Arai is the surname. But that man is not the founder, because Arai founder was Yuchiro Arai, who was making hats like this in 1900. Then his son, Hirotake Arai, who took the reins of the company in 1930, began making racing protective helmets for workers, until Michio Arai, Hirotake's son, saw the potential in the motorcycle world, and in 1950, he started making motorcycle helmets. And from that day, his goal was only one. Michio wanted to make Arai the number one company in the world, not in terms of business, but in terms of protection. So, what do we do? And what am I telling your people is, never stop. Yeah. How small the improvement will be. Just keep, never stop and gain protection. The first thing that I want to point out about this story is this. Yuichiro, Hirotake, Michio. The three leaders of Arai are the sons of the same dynasty. This is Japan. The family business is not a business. It is a mission passed down generation by generation. Okay, but what about today? I mean, the world is changing. We are in 2024. Michio now is 85 years old. He goes to the office every day, but sooner or later, it will be time to hand over the leadership. And whose turn will it be? Well, the new leader will be his son, Akito, who has been working in Arai since he was born in order to learn the mission and carry on the family tradition. So, uh, just by hearing the story, immediately I understood one thing. These men are not businessmen, they are missionaries. Throughout the presentation and throughout the three days that have followed, they never told us about marketing, sales, business, nothing. Which is just nonsense. Because I've been to many press events in my life, and in every press event they talk to you about numbers, marketing, market share. Do you wanna know what they talked us for three days in Arai? Just safety and protection, nothing more. I mean, the perception that I got is that these people don't give a f about money. It looks like the only thing they really care about is safety. Stop, that's it. And that's why for four generations, the company has been going on from father to son without investors. And the reason is simple, because if they start bringing investors in, the investors want to invest money in order to get a return as soon as possible. Which means new products, faster production, cheaper materials. But that might reduce the exaggerated safety that Arai is seeking, and that is simply unacceptable for them. And this philosophy is reflected in everything. For example, the room where they received us for the first time in 120 years. How was it? Plain, white, school desks, zero fancy stuff. And what about the company? Look at this. They, they don't care that it looks mega ultra modern. They just care about what's done inside. We were categorically forbidden from filming anything inside the factory. There was only one cameraman authorized by them and they provided us with very few materials and that was for company secrets. So I will show you everything that I can from the factory inside. The first thing that it showed us was impactful and in, in the true sense of the word. 
because they showed us the impact tests. Yeah, because every time a new model is produced, that model has to pass through homologations. And in order to be homologated, he has to pass through a series of impacts measured by a special machine. So, and basically, there is an accelerometer in there. You put the helmet in the machine, you leave the helmets in precise heights, like three meters, and then you crash it against flat or wedge or pointy surfaces, and the accelerometer inside measures the g-forces. To pass homologation, you have to be under these g-values. Now, you know what? Arai never gave a damn about homologations. <laughs> we don't want to make a helmet that pass homologation only. No? Do you want to know why? Because they designed helmets to be the safest in the world. So they're not just trying to pass the homologations. They're trying to achieve infinity. For example, the homologation only checked five impact points on the helmet, while Arai always tested every single point above this nail line. And do you understand that design a helmet that passes such a high criteria costs millions? And you don't need that to sell helmets. Yeah, you don't. But you need it if you want to make the safest helmets. And that's the only thing they care about. In recent years, the homologation has evolved. Now they check 12 points, but Arai has already been checking those points for years. Now, listen to me. Every time I see this test, it really makes me scared because this makes you understand why the helmet is the only thing you should never save money on. With that machine, they made the test of your head without helmet. Imagine this is the head. Do you know how high your head has to fall without helmet for the fall to be deadly? How much should we say? Like, I don't know, one meter, two meters? No, 33 centimeters. This simple, stupid fall would be deadly. And it's not me who say that, it's the machine. Look at this, look at the G-forces. So at this point, you may say, bah, I don't believe it. I mean, I fell from two meters, I see. I hit the head and I survived. That's bullshit. Yes, because your head is attached to the body with muscles, bones. Usually when you fall, you put your hands forward. So all these things lower the impact. But what if you can't reduce the impact? What if you hit something with your head? What if you faint before crashing? This graphics means only one thing. If you ride without helmets, or if you ride without tightening the helmet, uh, okay, uh, with that eye helmets, it's quite complicated, but I can guarantee you that with other helmets, if you don't tighten it, you just remove it like this easily and you will understand why it's harder to remove an eye helmet. Or if you keep the helmet like this, not to ruin your hair, you are stupid. If you see one of your friends riding like this, tell him, you are an idiot. You're not insulting him, you're saving his life. Now, at this point, what you're probably curious to know is, how do they make helmets like this one? Well, now the fun begins. It all starts with this, the fiber. And it's not just any fiber but it's called super fiber. It's a particular fiber that only Arai uses because it's 30% stronger than other fibers. This means that they can use the nine micron fiber that are therefore thinner and lighter, but he has only one small drawback, which is that compared to other fibers, it is six times more expensive. And the question is, why do they use a six times more expensive fiber if with a classic fiber that would pass the homologations because Arai's goal is not to save money, but to provide the best protection. Okay, but how do you go from wires to a helmet? It's crazy. We, we don't have the footage of the machine because it's secret, but I can tell you about it. Now, do you know how the cotton candy machines work? Have you ever seen them? Well, it's something like that. There is a machine that blows these fibers inside a stamp where we have a worker which moves the fiber in order to shape the first shell of the helmet. It's already a bit raisin coated and cooked in order to be hardened. And at this point it's weighted, checked, and so they apply the reinforcements. The reinforcement is applied with several layers of this fiber, which is called AR fabric. And this is a special fiber designed by Arai. This fiber is made into sheets that are cut by a machine in order to give the various shapes that depends on every model. Now, this fiber, of course, Arai will buy from a supplier, right? <laughs> Guys, do you think that Arai would buy something from an external supplier without being able to check the quality? No, they weave it themselves with this machine. 
every single sheet is made with this loom. Among the other things, they also put this net composite, which is a special reinforcement net, and every single piece is weighted at every single step of the production. If it doesn't meet the required weight, it is discarded. At this point, the shell is ready to be baked, it is placed in a special oven and cooked at 100 degrees, and at this point, the excess has to be cut off. And here again, we understand that ice mania. These metal clips, which are used to staple the layers, are put in places that will be cut so that not a single clip remains in the shell. Which I say, I mean, a tiny clip. What changes inside the shell? Nothing. <laughs> no, I mean, nothing. But even that small clip, they don't want it inside the helmet. And how do they cut the excess? Usually, if you want to cut the fiberglass, you use water cutting. But the problem is that water cutting creates vibrations that damage the fiber. So, Arai uses a special laser, and this is the only step done by a machine, because all the rest of the operation is done by hands. At this point, the shell is finished and has to do the safety check. A very simple check in which they check if the thickness of the shell is sufficient. Because if it was too thin, in fact, it would be less safe. I mean, it would still pass the homologation, but you already know, they don't care about the homologation. So, if it passes the check, it is signed. Otherwise, it is discarded. Now, <laughs> here is where the total madness begins. If you take an Arai helmet and tear it apart, you will see two signatures inside. But why two signatures? Because every single shell is checked twice. 1977. Mr. Arai walks into the company one day and sees a worker checking a shell for the second time. At that point, he asks him, why are we checking the shell twice? The worker answers something like, ah, you know, we have to give this helmet to a professional rider, so I just wanted to make sure that everything is okay. And so Arai asks, do you really think that checking the helmet twice makes it safer? Well, if that's the case, why would a professional rider be more protected than an ordinary motorcyclist? Since that day, Mr. Arai built a second factory in another place just to double check every single shell. That's insane. At this point, the shells are ready to be painted, and here starts a ping pong. The paste is applied to cover the porosity. The paint is applied. They sand it by hand. They weight it. And why did I say ping pong? Because at the end of the process, it is checked. And if they see even a small imperfection, they sign it, they send it back, and they start all over until everything is nice and smooth. And in all these steps of the assembly line, every single person is responsible for its job and for the job of the person before him. Therefore, you're sure that everyone wants to check not only his job, but also the job of the previous person. And the question is, why do they do everything by hand with the machines that we have today? Well, the reason is that according to Michio, no machine still can beat the hands of a skilled craftsman. At this point, it's time to apply the graphics. They are not painted, but they are deco, which means a lot of tiny bits are printed and applied to the helmet. It would be faster to paint the helmet, but it would have some extra weight, which they don't want. And the one bizarre thing that I noticed in this department is that every single decal worker is female, not a single male. That's because over the years, they tried to get males to do the job, but they realized that this precise job, when you need super precision, well, it was done better by females. So you know what? Males, go back to send the helmets. <laughs> so at this point, the only things that are missing are the details, the rubber, the visor. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. The inner shell, the most important thing for safety. Yeah, and here I just want to debunk a cliche. I don't know if you ever happened to see a crash helmet where you saw the outer shell destroyed. And at that point, somebody told you, hey, look at that helmet. It did its job. Well, no, it just didn't. That's because the impact is not absorbed by the outer shell, but it's absorbed by the inner shell. The outer shell does not have to collapse like a car in a crash test, but instead it has to remain rigid in order to disperse the impact through the whole shell. The head is protected by the inner shell, which is made of polystyrene that compresses to absorb the impact. And by the way, did you know that the inside of the helmet has an expiration date? That's because after a number of years, it hardens, protects less, and at that point you have to change the helmet. And this is true for all helmets, remember it. At this point, they showed us the exterior of the new helmet, the Arai Tourix 5, 
Ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> I forgot to tell you that all this trip was made to present the new Arai helmet. Well, we took a 300 km trip through the hills of Japan to try this helmet. Thanks also to Alpinister, who provided me all the clothes, which were very high quality materials. And what about the helmets? Visors easily removable without tools to easily change configuration. Each outer piece is designed to reduce the rotational forces in case of impact. They improve the safety and even more, fully customizable interior. And back to our story, how is the interior made? This is the material that makes the interiors. Do you see that it's made with different densities? This is done to accommodate the different parts of the head to the different types of impacts. Arai is the only company in the world that makes the interior with different densities in just one piece. They are not glued together. How they do it, it is unknown because they didn't even show us how they do it. Good. Now, the inner shell has to be put inside the outer shell. And how is it done? <laughs> Usually in the helmets, there is a slit in here, which is a wider area that allows the inner shell to be inserted. And this insertion is done by a machine. The problem is that that slit for our eye reduces the safety. Because if the helmet is too wide in here, when you crash like this, you might break your collarbone with the helmet. So, you know what? Our eye helmets are narrower in here. That's why it was not that easy for me to remove it. The problem is that there is no machine capable of putting the inner shell into the helmet. So, how they do it? By hands. They have special skilled workers just for that. And look at their forearms. Look at this. So at this point, the final check is made. Yet another in a long list. The helmet thus is ready to be packed and delivered to the final customer. What I saw in Japan left me really impressed. And one thing that you may be wondering is why does that I don't make openable helmets? I mean, it's a huge slice of market worth tens of millions of euros and Arai doesn't make them. Why? Well, actually they made it and they made it so strong that it passed the Snell homologation. You could race in MotoGP with that helmet. Wow, and where is it? They never produced it because although it passed every single homologation, it was not enough safe for our eye standards. <laughs> so all these things made me understand why so many people believe that I makes the safest helmets in the world. So at this point I was curious because you know, I trust people, I trust company, but in this world, you, you don't know if you can really trust somebody. I, I always prefer to do my own researches to check if those things are real. So after the trip, I searched online to see if I could find some comparative rankings between helmets brands. And I found this one that takes data from the Sharp, which is the helmet safety rating and evaluation program. This website did the top 10. And what I see is first position, AGV. Second position, Shoei. Third position, Shark. And just in P4, Arai. Wow, <laughs> I didn't expect to find Arai just in P4. I mean, there are even some helmets which are given two stars out of five. I, I, I just can't explain it. I mean, after what I saw inside a ice factory, how is it possible to have an even higher safety standards? Well, after searching hard, I found this article from an Italian magazine called Moto.it from 2018. I will translate it for you. They probably had the same question. So they did some research and what they found is that the official Sharp website does not provide more precise information comparing the test methodology to the two systems mentioned above in the article. So Moto.it has directly contacted the Sharp authorities for further clarification. And well, unfortunately we have to record that despite repeated attempts to contact them, we have not received a response to precise and timely questions at the time we wrote this article. Thus, noting a fairly poor level of transparency. Huh. And finally, the same protocol for awarding stars has never been disclosed. <laughs> wow. If you want to read it, I linked every single article below. It's in Italian, you can translate it. So the thing is that it's not clear by what criteria these scores are given. But it doesn't end here. Because if you look further back, 
I found that in March 26, 2009, four motorcycle helmets, though approved, failed to pass impact tests while showing certification. July 1, 2013, eight models out of 15 tested in the lab, although approved, do not guarantee safety. That means that the helmet used to pass the homologation was not the same sold to customers. I'll stop here, but you can understand that there is a little transparency in the helmets market. So who can really be trusted? I just want to invite you to make one thought. The brain is the only part of the body that cannot be fixed. If you break it, you're dead. This is the thing you should never save money on. So what brand to choose? Well, since I like to be honest with you, Arai paid me zero to make this video. But you saw that I have a sponsor on the suit, right? Yes, that logo is just because they give me helmets. They give me zero money until today. If in the future they want to sponsor me, I would not say no. <laughs> but whatever, whether they sell one million helmets or zero, it doesn't change anything to me. I don't make any profits. So I just wanted to show you the reality and the things that I saw in Japan. If you enjoyed the video, I'm happy. And after this, everybody's free to buy the helmet they want.